Hey everybody, and welcome back to kind of the chem of the week, and we're just going to call it chem of, I don't know, the month, but <laughs> I've been kind of slacking on video taking, and mostly because I've been really busy, been vacation, we've had a lot of other stuff going on, but we're going to talk about one thing I really want to talk about, and something I've been noticing again this year, and what I see pretty much every year. Um, and that's going to be the difference between acetochlor and metulochlor when we talk about weed control in corn and soybeans. So acetochlor is usually in products like Harness Extra, Harness, uh, Harness Max, um, Surpass. It's even in Resicor. It's in a lot of different premixes, Keystone LA, NXT. Um, a lot of those premixes have uh, acetochlor in them. That's kind of the main component for grass control and small seeded broadleaves. And then we're going to talk about metulochlor, which is in a lot of products like, well, not as much anymore, but uh, we used to have it in Lumax EZ, Lumax. Um, it's in Acheron. It's in a lot of bean premixes anymore. Um, it, it's, it's in a lot of stuff. And Tool's a great product. Uh, so pretty much the main main thing we talk about when we talk about metulochlor is dual. Um, metulochlor has been really, really good on small seeded broadleaves. It's pretty good on grass. Um, the one drawback on metulochlor is going to be the rate of flash is closer to that is usually kind of a problem uh, for a lot of guys. Usually, and when we say three quarters of an inch, I, you're going to get a bunch of different people talking about different things. Uh, for me, usually when I think three quarters of an inch, um, if we get a quarter inch rainfall three times in a row, is it going to activate the chemical? Yes and no. I really want to see a three quarter inch rainfall to get that activated. And the nice thing about acetochlor, which has got a lot of the same qualities as metulochlor, um, acetochlor only needs a quarter inch rainfall activation. So there's there's some kind of give and take. It seems like dual maybe lasts a little bit longer um, and the acetochlor doesn't quite last quite as long, but it gets you that residual right up front. Um, We've, we've kind of seen this year, uh, especially with metulochlor in a lot of our prevent plant scenarios and, and a lot of our water hemp situations, metulochlor is going to get you four weeks, maybe, depending on the rate you use on, on, on water hemp. And acetochlor is going to be about the same. Uh, really, it's kind of a similar give and take. Uh, the, one, like, the one drawback is what I said before with, with uh, metulochlor or dual is going to be that, that three quarter inch rainfall activation versus a quarter inch. So it seems like with Metulochlor this year, we had a lot of water hemp breaks, and most of those water hemp breaks are in places where we didn't get the activating rainfall, and so we had water hemp come up, and where we got a quarter inch of rain, the, the acetochlor was doing much better. Um, when it comes to actual weeds controlled by each one, they're pretty similar. The one outlier, especially on acetochlor, I will say is fall panic from control. Uh, I've got a lot of guys that went out with metulochlor this year and we're just seeing a ton of fall panicum. And where we had acetochlor, I'm still seeing some. Um, the one caveat with that is, and, and I think you always really should if, if you can, you know, if Wisconsin, we have atrazine restriction zones, but if you don't have an atrazine prohibition area, really add atrazine to it. When we've added atrazine, it really bumps up both, uh, both performance of metulochlor and acetochlor, and especially acetochlor on fall panicum. Um, the one drawback with acetochlor is going to be we don't have as much on like velvet leaf, uh, some of the larger seeded broad leaves. Dual picks up a little bit better on that. Not a whole lot better, but it is better. Um, and I really don't think we're going to have a lot of issues with velvet leaf anyway. Um, now, when we took to beans, so beans are a little different, right? So we can add um, acetochlor post emerge on beans with warrant, but we can't put it on pre emerge. And dual, we can go um, pre-emerge all the way up to kind of early post. And so that kind of gives you a little bit of a different feel on what you're going to do with it. And the one thing on corn that I've kind of missed a little bit too is acetochlor, as far as corn goes, it's better pre-emerge and very, very early post. The, the label restriction is often 11 inches on acetochlor. And when you go to metulochlor, you're up to 30 inches. So it's kind of a, a give and take. I, I think I'd rather see acetochlor pre, and if you're going to come back, come back with a, a metulochlor product. So now back to soybeans, um, that's a little bit of the opposite. We really want to change that up and put the dual down pre if we're going to try to do some kind of overlapping residuals and then come back with a acetochlor post. 
And the only acetocore really labeled for soybean use is Warrant. And Warrant has a safener with it so that we can actually use it post-emerge on beans. Um, that's something you really got to pay attention to. I really don't mind using Warrant post on beans. There's going to be some guys that say that they see injury. I've seen it. Uh, more often than not, it's more to do with that safener settling out in the tank and we're not getting adequate uh, incorporation of that herbicide before we actually get it in the sprayer tank. So that's kind of where we have issues with both of those. Um, and it's the same kind of performance in soybeans. You know, you're going to pick up some small seeded and mostly grass. You're not going to pick up things like ragweed and stuff like that. You're going to have to add something else in there. So it, it's, it's kind of a, a give and take again. You know, it just depends on personal preference really and you know I, I I haven't seen as much of the injury as some people have but where we did see injury was more the earlier days of warrants uh, with that safener settling on the tank so we just didn't know what we were doing yet um, the other thing with dual or met metulichlor on corn so you're gonna have to remember that safener is a little different if you're using unsafe and dual you can't go out pre-emerge with it on corn you're you're gonna have to use a safe and dual um, so just you got to remember all these things and like I always say, you know, you want to make sure you read and follow the label directions and it's going to depend on your situation and what's going to work for you. Um, so my opinion, it, this is coming from several years of, of spraying these chemicals. So basically for me, when I look at pre-emerge or residual chemistry, my big outlier, or the thing that I pay attention to the most is what do I have to scout um, and what am I going to be most worried about? Uh, making sure we get a, a second pass on if we have to clean some stuff up if we're going 100% pre-emerge. And to me, that situation, I'm looking at a C-decor. If I'm trying to go 100% full rate pre, um, I really want to go with a C-decor just because from my experience, especially with the lower rainfall activation, I always saw less of a chance or an opportunity that we'd have to come back and clean those fields up. Some people are going to tell you a duel's better. Um, there are certain situations where I think dual might be a better product, especially when we're going post-emerge. Uh, but honestly, if we're going pre-emerge and we're expecting that residual to hold us through to canopy, um, I'm really going to go with the seed core over the, over a metula core. Now in soybeans, I really like throwing some dual in or metula core with our soybean pre-emerges. Um, it's a really good product. It's fairly inexpensive. It's not really expensive. You're usually looking about eight to 10 bucks an acre, even with generics. Um, and then when we come back post, if I want to throw some different grass chemicals in, I'm going to be throwing in a warrant top uh, product. Um, Outlook's kind of an outlier in there. I'm not going to talk about Outlook, but the other thing is some of the new chemistries too. We got pyrexisulfone coming in. That's kind of a different, different animal. Um, you know, and in soybeans, that's something we got to pay attention to as well. Um, but it's going to be a more pricier option, but it might be a little bit better for some people in certain situations. But yeah, that's it. That's uh, Cetacore versus Ventulacore. I really like Acetaclor. I think it's a better chemistry when we look at corn, especially pre-emerge. Um, it's a really good chemistry on soybeans post-emerge. You just got to get past um, making sure you have decent product and make sure you agitate those tanks before you use it for spraying. Um, and there's nothing wrong with Ventulacore, but in a lot of fields this year, and a lot of corn that I've been walking, especially some of these out here, I've seen acetocore perform much better on fall panicum and some of the grasses we're seeing escape this year. Nothing is going to beat the fact that we didn't get canopy in a lot of fields and that's that's going to be the big thing that a lot of people are going to have to pay attention to this season at least. We we had a lot of fields we just never made canopy until maybe a month or two ago and those fields we're seeing grass escapes no matter what we did. So one other thing like I said before make sure you get atrazine in there especially if you're going on corn if you don't have prohibition areas. Um, it just makes a huge difference. If you're in a prohibition area, check the labels, but if, you should be able to add simazine to it. Uh, it's a fairly similar product to atrazine, um, especially with a lot of premixes going on with mes or mesotrione anymore. You really want to make sure you get atrazine in there. It really helps out that meso uh, do a really good job on, on residual and especially with knockdown. So that's my thoughts on Mesita or metulacor and acetylchlor. I'll catch you guys next time. Hopefully we can get some more videos. I know I say that every time, but it's just been, it's been pretty rough this year. We started seeing the entire spot blow up recently too. I've been just stuck scouting stuff. So I'll catch you guys next time.